in our previous lecture we have derived the givens method for finding the eigen values and eigen vectors of a given matrix essentially the method reduces the given matrix into a triadical system then we find the sturm sequence whose last member is the characteristic equation that is fn is the last uh, the last member of the sequence and that is the characteristic equation then we use the sturm's theorem to locate the eigen values in required length of interval say 1 or less than 1 then when once you locate the eigen values we refine these eigen values by using the bisection and lastly we can find the eigen vectors if it is necessary last time we will take an example we in which we have reduced the given matrix to a triadical form let us take now an example which we from which we can find out the eigen values using the sturm's theorem so let me take the example like this use givens method to find the eigen values of the matrix 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 we considered this example earlier also for uh, we use this quotient matrix in solving the system of equations in the sor procedure <coughs> this problem is already in the triadical form so we do not have to reduce it to triadical form so what we are given is the problem is the in triadical form now i need to form the sturm sequence so let us write down what will be our sturm sequence Now, for this I need to write down our matrix F n that is your characteristic equation lambda i minus a that is equal to lambda minus 2 plus 1 0 plus 1 lambda minus 2 plus 1 0 plus 1 lambda minus 2. Now, we want to form the sequence from here using this and let me use the next page. So, starting with f 0 is 1, 1 into 1 minor is lambda minus 2, so, therefore, f 1 is lambda minus 2. Now, we want to use the formula f r is lambda minus b r, f r minus 1 minus c r minus 1 squared f r minus 2. or if we have called it as C r then we will take it as C r we will take it as C r. Now, f 2 therefore, is lambda minus b 2 that is lambda minus 2 into f 1 into f 1 this is the value is 1 therefore, minus 1 square into f naught f naught is 1 therefore, this is lambda minus 2 f 1 minus 1 then f 3 is we are expanding now about this element lambda minus 2 into f 2 minus square of this that is minus 1 f 1. Now, we will not simplify it further we would try to compute these quantities and write down the changes in sign in this term sequence. Therefore, what we have here is let us put lambda sin f naught f 1 f 2 f 3 and number of changes in sign we will call it as v of lambda. Now, let us start at some number let us start with lambda is minus 1. So, when lambda is minus 1 f 0 is positive f 0 is 1 f 1 is minus 1 minus 2 that gives us minus 3 then I have f 2 is equal to lambda minus 2 that is minus 3 into minus 3 that is f 1 minus 3 and minus 1 that is equal to 8. And lastly f 3 obtained from this is minus 3 
into f 2 that is 8 minus f 1 that is plus 3 and this is negative. So, we have the signs of this as positive f 1 is negative f 2 is positive and f 3 is negative. So, I have one change of sign here another change of sign here another change of sign here. So, I have three changes of sign at minus 1. Now, let us take 0 lambda is equal to 0 we will have f 0 is 1 again f 1 is when lambda is 0 it is minus 2 f 2 is equal to when lambda is 0 minus 2 times f 1 minus f 0 that is minus 1 this is plus 4 minus 1 that is equal to 3 f 3 is lambda minus 2 that is minus 2 again into 3 minus f 1. So, this is still negative. So, I have again f 0 is positive f 1 is negative f 2 is positive <coughs> f 3 is negative. So, there is no eigenvalue between minus 1 and 0. Now, let us take lambda is equal to 1. When lambda is equal to 1 I have f 1 is I am putting lambda is mi 1 therefore, it is minus 1 f 2 is equal to lambda minus 2 that is minus 1 into f 1 that is minus 1 and minus 1 that is equal to 0 and f 3 is now f 2 is 0. So, we simply minus of f 1 that is equal to plus 1. Therefore, I have at 1 this is positive f 1 is negative f 2 is 0. So, we will continue the sign of this. So, I put a 0 over here and I have a plus sign here for f 3. So, I have one change of sign here and another change of sign here therefore, it is 2. Therefore, there is an eigenvalue between 0 and 1 there is an eigenvalue between 0 and 1. Now, I repeat it let me take lambda is equal to 2 then I we can straight away write it lambda is equal to 2 this is positive this is a 0 and lambda is equal to 2 this is a 0 therefore, this is a minus sign and lambda is equal to minus 2 is a 0 therefore, minus of f 1 is 0. Now, f 3 is equal to 0 f 3 is 0 is our characteristic equation itself therefore, if I produce a 0 that means, that is an eigenvalue. Therefore, this 2 is even though there is one change of sign it is showing that where is one change of sign, but since f 3 is equal to 0 this is an eigenvalue this is an is this is an eigenvalue 2 is an eigenvalue. Then I give the uh, I will have the uh, signs I will give the signs. 0 minus there is 1. So, there is no nothing here at 4 I have got all become positive here and I have a 0 here all of them are positive yes. and therefore, there is an eigenvalue between 3 and 4. Therefore, the we have the eigenvalues located in 0 and 1 2 is an eigenvalue 3 and 4 this one. these are the 3 eigenvalues for this particular problem. Now, let us try to refine the eigenvalue in 0 and 1. So, we said we now use bisection now use bisection to refine to refine the eigenvalues. So, between 0 and 1 I will take the value as half and then compute our signs of the this and I will give the signs that we have here plus minus plus minus. So, I have here 1 2 3. So, there are 3 changes of sign then I can go back and then just look at this particular 0 there are 3 changes of sign there are 3 changes of sign therefore, there is no eigenvalue between 0 and half but the eigenvalue is between half and 1. Therefore, from here we can say the eigenvalue is in half and 1. 
now I bisect it further. So, I can take 0.75 as the next quantity to be checked. So, I would again go about and then I find that these are the signs for this. Now, there is a between half and 0.75, this is 3 changes of sign, this is 2 changes of sign, therefore, the eigenvalue lies between 0.5 and 0.75, therefore, eigenvalue is in 0 0.5, 0 0.75. Now, this is how we can go on bisecting it and get it the required accuracy of the number of decimal places whether it is 3, 4, 5 decimal places it is just a matter of computation and finding the signs of the sequence and then find taking the eigenvalue. Now, as I mentioned the Givens method is one of the popular methods and its variations that is available in the software. The there are further modifications for this there is what is known as householder method which is uh, uh, in a sense more powerful in some situations in which the rotations are not in the plane. So, far we are using the rotation in the plane, but the uh, householder method uses the rotations in the three dimensional plane that is it is uh, it also takes a reflection. So, it will be a rotation in the plane and then rotation in the three dimensional plane. So, it takes what is known as reflections also. But however, we shall not take that method. Householder method is also one of the most powerful methods and its variants, variants, many variants are there which are available on the software. But Givens method as well as the Jacobi method is also available and quite popular in the software. Now, we will go to how to find the eigenvalues of a arbitrary matrix, not a symmetric matrix. So, let us now take that A is any matrix. Now, this is a very difficult problem. The one of the earliest methods is known as the Ruti Saucer method. It is known as the Ruti Saucer method. In fact, this is one of the original methods, few methods that were started for the arbitrary matrices and then variants and these modifications and refinements of Rutte Saucer method has been made. So, that the methods become very powerful, but the idea behind Rutte Saucer method is very simple and very straightforward and that is we take the matrix A, we decompose it into L into U, we decompose into just your product of these matrices L and U. So, let us call this as L 1 and U 1. And in order to put it in a program, we can let us write down A1, we write it denote it as A1 as this one, with of course our L i i is equal to 1. Then what he does, we form I will call this as A2 as U1 L1. That means I interchange the order of this matrix here. The we have now decomposed as L1 U1, change the order in this decomposition and write this U1 L1. What is this A2? Let us write U2 is U1. L1 by definition, if I pre multiply by U1 inverse, I would get my L1. Therefore, what we have here is A1, uh, I am removing U1 inverse, so I will have here U1 inverse. I am writing for L1. So, I am post multiplying by U1 inverse. So, I will have A1 U1 inverse or we could as well write this as alternatively we could have written this as uh, U1 is equal to L1 inverse A1 L1. I can look at it in both the ways. Therefore, A1 and A2 are similar matrices because this is similarity transformation. Therefore, A1 and A2 have the same eigenvalues. So, even if I write interchange this one from this I have got A 1 A 2 have the same eigenvalues. Have the same eigenvalues. Now, what I do I multiply this U 1 and L 1 multiply this U 1 L 1 and again decompose it. So, I would again write this A 2 as L 2 U 2. So, decompose again this. 
Now, again form A 3 is U 2 L 2. Now, by definition A 3 and A 2 have the same Eigen values A 2 A 3 have same Eigen values. That means, A 1 A 3 have the same Eigen values. have the same eigenvalues. Now, we proceed on in the limit in the limit this A k reduces to an upper triangular matrix. Reduces to an upper triangular matrix. Hence, the eigenvalues are on the diagonal. Hence, the eigenvalues are on the diagonal. Therefore, finally, it reduces the matrix into this particular form. This, these are all zeros, and we have these elements. Therefore, the eigenvalues are now located on the diagonal itself. Now, immediately you can see that the method would fail if you have complex eigenvalues, because complex eigenvalues cannot occur on the diagonal, because they are complex pairs. So, in that particular case the method will fail. Therefore, it will work when you have real eigenvalues and the all the eigenvalues are now located on the diagonal of the matrix. Now, this is a simple and straightforward method, a very a trivial method, but this is the precursor for the later on methods which have been developed based on these ideas and the, uh, the further modifications are what is known as QR algorithm and other al algorithm wherein it is reduced to not to this form, but to one more diagonal below called the Hessenberg form. So, we reduce this matrix into upper, Hess as upper Hessenberg form, so that the complex eigenvalues can also be located if there is you see what uh, you may ask uh, I mean before making that comment you may ask what would happen if I use Rutte's Hauser method, but it has a complex egg pair. Then what happens is these we are now force we are saying that in the limit it goes to an upper triangular matrix. Now, there will be some elements here which will never go to 0 that means, even though you go on doing these decompositions the elements on this one diagonal below would never go to 0 and that is a, an indicator that yes what you have the eigenvalues of the matrix have some complex eigenvalues therefore, it is not going to 0. So, it is the appearance of these numbers here would tell that there is complex eigenvalues. To take care of this one it is reduced to not upper triangular matrix, but to an upper Hessenberg form where one more diagonal will be available here, but the eliminations are used the givens rotations other rotations are used reduced upper Hessen form and then find the required eigenvalues. Those are the refinements that is done for this problem, but we will not take up those detail uh, the other methods. But let us take an example for the Rutte Saucer method. So, let us take this as an example. Uh, let us say find all the eigenvalues of the matrix. Let us take the matrix A as 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2. 1 3 2. So, this method will work for the symmetric matrix as well. Huh, but we have powerful methods for symmetric matrices, yes, it would be, uh, but we have more powerful methods for the symmetric matrix. Uh, using Rodi Saucer method, Uh, let us also put the criteria for stopping iterate until the off diagonal elements below the diagonal of course, below the diagonal or less than some let us put some tolerance 0 0 0.5 in magnitude.
Now, it is necessary for us to give this particular criteria, because we are saying in the limit this is going to reduce to a tri to upper triangular form. Therefore, these three elements are going to go to 0 and since we are on computer, we have to say what is our tolerance that we are giving for this eigenvalues. Depending on that number of iterations that we will take or the number of decompositions will depend on that one. So, let us start therefore, with writing A is equal to 1 1 1 2 1 2 1 3 2 and decompose this as L 1 into U 1, decompose this as L 1 and U 1. Now, this is a straightforward one which we already have done it. Let me give the result for this one. This is decomposition is very simple. So, I will take this as 1 minus 2 1, this is 1 1 1 0 minus 1 0 0 0. this is the decomposition of this. Then we are saying form the matrix A 2, this we are calling it as A 1. So, I can write this as A 1, A 2 is equal to U 1 L 1. So, I interchange this product. So, I will write this as 1 1 0 minus 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 and 1 0 0 2 1 0 1 minus 2 1. So, I mean just interchanging these two products, then I find the product of this. This gives me 4, so I can multiply it out, this comes out 4 minus 1 1 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 minus 2 1. Now, I must decompose this again, so that means I must write down A 2 is equal to L 2 U 2 and this is the values of this are 1 0 0 minus half 1 0 1 by 4 7 by 6 1 and this is 4 minus 1 1 minus 3 by 2 minus half 0 0 1 by 6. So, this I have decomposed it product of a lower triangular matrix and upper triangular matrix and we have the lower triangular matrix in this form and the upper triangular matrix in this particular form. Now, in the next step I must interchange them and multiply again. So, I would now define this as A 3 uh, U 2 L 2. So, that means, I will write this as 4 minus 1 1 0 minus 3 by 2 half 0 0 1 by 6 and L 2 is 1 0 0 minus half 1 0 7 by 6 1. Now, I can multiply this and I will have this as this is 19 by 4, 1 by 6, 1, 7 by 8, minus 11 by 12, half, 1 by 24, 7 by 36, 1 by 6. Now, I need number of these decompositions uh, and I would leave this and give you the result, so that you can verify this. I need to reach the stage of A 7 and I will have U 6 L 6 and this comes out to be 4.7913, 0 0.0031, 1, 0 0.0016, minus 0 0.999, 3456, this turns out to be 0, 0 0.004, 0 0.2056. Okay. After repeating it for the 6 times, these decompositions, this is the value that I produce at the value U6L6 that is your A7. 
Now, we have been given the accuracy tolerance of 0 0.005. So, you can see that the we have reached the required stage this is smaller the, the previous iteration was greater than 0 0 5, but this iteration you can see that these three values shall be compared with the tolerance and when once this tolerance is reached we assume that this has now reached the upper triangular form. So, we, therefore, the Eigen values will be located on the diagonal therefore, we pick up the Eigen values as lambda 1 is 4.7913, the second Eigen value is minus 0 0.9999 and the third Eigen value is 0 0.2056. These are the three Eigen values. The exact Eigen values are lambda 1 is uh, 5 plus root 21 by 2 that is 4.7913, lambda 2 is minus 1 and lambda 3 is the pair with respect to this 5 minus root 21 by this that is 2087. Now, you can see that the quite accurately the Eigen values has been obtained this, this is minus 1 and these are the Eigen values. As I said the Ruti saucer method is a good method provided your Eigen values are all distinct. So, that this reduction is possible much more faster in the case of the complex or repeated Eigen values there are some problems and therefore, the refinements that were taken place were because of that and as I said the software contains the, uh, the, uh, the refinement of this as a cure algorithm. Now, what we would like to see next is that if suppose you want a single Eigen value of a matrix what are the occasions where do we need it. For example, if we are talking of the Gauss Seidel iteration, Jacobi iteration or SOR iterations or if you want to find the uh, optimal omega in SOR, we wanted the spectral radius of the Jacobi matrix or if I want the rate of convergence I need the largest Eigen value in magnitude that is spectral radius. That means, I want one Eigen value of the largest system which may be considering maybe few hundred of the equations. Now, it is not necessary for us to use it Jacobi method or any other method to find all the Eigen values and then find the largest Eigen value in magnitude that will be very very expensive to find the rate of convergence or whether it is converging or not. Therefore, we must have some methods wherein I can locate or find the Eigen value a particular Eigen value required that is the largest Eigen value in magnitude and in many practical applications engineering applications you need smallest Eigen value in magnitude. So, we need the smallest Eigen value in magnitude, largest Eigen value in magnitude or a particular Eigen value somewhere in the range of the Eigen values. So, we will now give methods which will locate the either the largest Eigen value in magnitude. So, we want the largest Eigen value in magnitude or we want the smallest Eigen value in magnitude or the third case is that we need any Eigen value. in its range. For example, you may say that I know that this matrix has an Eigen value close to 3 find Eigen value, but that will not be the largest or the smallest it is a particular Eigen value. So, I can also find <coughs> the, the this particular Eigen value for this and the method that is used for finding the largest Eigen value is known as the power method. Uh, this determines the largest Eigen value in magnitude and the corresponding Eigen vector. So, this method finds the largest Eigen value in magnitude in magnitude and the corresponding Eigen vector. Now, let us assume that we have got distinct Eigen values. So, let us assume that lambda 1, lambda 2 
lambda n are distinct eigenvalues. We shall state slightly later that this method will work if the largest eigenvalue is distinct, but there will be repeated eigenvalues elsewhere. Like for example, you may have a matrix in which the eigenvalues are 3, 1, 1, 1, but I must have the complete system of eigenvectors. So, a 3 by a 4 by 4 matrix should have 4 eigenvectors, then it is a complete system of eigenvectors. A 3 by 3 matrix should have a 3 eigenvectors, linearly independent eigenvectors and that forms a complete system. You have you have number of matrices wherein the matrix may be order 3, but you may have the eigenvectors less than the required number that is 3 if some of them are repeated eigenvalues. So, if you have eigenvalues say lambda is 1 and 1, you may have only one independent eigenvector not two independent vectors, then that will not form a complete system of eigenvectors. But when once you assume they are distinct, then the eigenvectors are also linearly independent. Therefore, we are starting with this, but we will generalize it and say that it will work in other cases also, wherein you have complete system of eigenvectors. Now, since these are distinct eigenvalues, let us order them according to their magnitude. So, let us assume that magnitude of lambda 1 is greater than magnitude of lambda 2, so on greater than magnitude of lambda 1. What this would really imply is that magnitude of lambda k by lambda 1 is less than 1. So, these are arranged in the order therefore, this is the largest eigenvalue in magnitude therefore, the ratio is going to be less than 1. So, this we are going to use in our method. Now, we shall say let the corresponding eigenvectors be v 1 v 2 let let us put underscore. So, that we have this as an vector let v 1 v 2 v n be the corresponding eigenvectors. That means, v 1 eigenvector corresponds to lambda 1, v 2 eigenvector corresponds to lambda 2 and so on. Let us take a two dimensional case, let us just illustrate what we want to express it here. If I have two independent eigenvectors for a matrix A, then these two vectors can be taken as basis of a two dimensional coordinate system. For example, if I have the x y coordinate system, I can take any other coordinate system, any other vector as a for example, a i b j and some a star i plus b star j as a new coordinate system. So, I can always have a new coordinate system in the two dimensional space. Therefore, if I have a 2 by 2 matrix and I find two linearly independent eigenvectors that will form a basis for a two dimensional space. Similarly, if I take a 3 by 3 matrix, I produce three linearly independent eigenvectors, it will form an three dimensional space. Similarly, since these are corresponding eigenvectors, and these are linearly independent eigenvectors therefore, they form an n dimensional space vector space. Therefore, these are the uh, corresponding eigenvectors, but they are also linearly independent these are also linearly independent. Therefore, these eigenvectors they form an n dimensional vector space. Now, we would like to make the statement here that even if the low eigenvalues lower eigenvalues that is lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda n any of them is repeated any number of times we do not bother as long as it produces n linearly independent vectors. That means, the method would also work would also work when the lower valued eigenvalues that is we are talking of magnitude of lambda 2, so on magnitude of lambda n. are repeated. But, 
there exists a set of n linearly independent eigenvectors. The reason is that we want to form an n dimensional vector space. Now, if I take any vector in this space, I can write it as a linear combination of this. So, any vector v can be written as some c 1 v 1, c 2 v 2, c n v n. Now, what I do? It is the power method is very simple. We just pre multiply this by a. So, pre multiply by a. So, c 1 a v 1 plus c 2 a v 2 so on c n a v n. But by definition a v 1 is lambda v 1 a v 2 is lambda v 2, a v n is lambda v n. So, I can write this as since lambda is there let me take out lambda common and write this as c 1 v 1 plus c 2 v 2 sorry I will I'll write the next page I need the next this not. Uh, let us write down one more step here c 1 is equal to lambda 1 v 1 plus c 2 lambda 2 v 2 plus c n lambda n v n. So, a, a v 1 is lambda 1 v 1, a v 2 is lambda v 2 because they are corresponding eigenvectors. Now, I will take out lambda 1 common from here <coughs> c 1 v 1 lambda 2 by lambda 1 v 2 plus c n lambda n by lambda 1 n. Now, I repeat the procedure. So, I pre multiply by a again. So, I will write down a square of v pre multiply by a. So, I will have a square of v therefore, this will be lambda 1. Now, again a v 1 will be lambda 1 v 1 plus c 2 lambda 2 by lambda 1 I have again a v 2 a v 2 is lambda 2 v 2 plus c n lambda n by lambda 1 again a v n is lambda n v n. Again I will take lambda 1 out. So, I will have lambda 1 square c 1 v 1 c 2 lambda 2 by lambda 1 whole square again this is lambda 2 by lambda 1 this is lambda 2 by lambda 1. So, this is lambda 2 by lambda 1 whole square v 2 plus c n lambda n by lambda 1 whole square of v n. Now, let us suppose we have done it k times. So, let me write down what will happen at when we pre multiply k times. This will be lambda 1 to the power of k c 1 v 1 lambda 2 by lambda 1 to the power of k v 2 plus c n lambda n by lambda 1 to the power of k and v n. Now, let the uh, next one also I require to give the final observation. So, we will have lambda 1 to the power of k plus 1 c 1 v 1 c 2 lambda 2 by lambda 1 k plus 1 v 2 
plus C n lambda n by lambda 1 k plus 1 V n. Now, let us just number this as 2, this as number 3. Now, let us assume as k tends to infinity what happens? As k tends to infinity, the right hand side of 2, all these ratios in magnitude, magnitude lambda 2 by lambda 1 is less than 1. Therefore, this would go to 0, this would go to 0. So, all of them would go to 0, the right hand side will converge to C 1 V 1 into lambda 1 k. Therefore, the right hand side of 2 tends to C 1 lambda 1 to the power of k V 1. Similarly, the right hand side of 3, all of them are again 0. So, this will converge to C 1 lambda 1 k plus 1 V 1. Now, what we are looking at is when we have performed sufficient number of iterations, these multiplications, what would happen to the right hand side? The right hand side, this any previous iterate will converge to this and the next iterate will converge this. Now, if I take the ratio of the components of the right hand side, this quantity, this ratio is lambda 1. So, take this uh, component of this divide by this, C 1 is a number cancels. Now, V 1 V 1 its component also cancels, the ratio of this is lambda 1. Therefore, the ratio of the right hand side of any component is lambda 1. Therefore, these are also vectors on the left hand side. If I take the ratio of these components of these two vectors, it should be equal to the right hand side because the identity this is equal to. So, in the limit the ratio on the right hand side is lambda 1 therefore, the ratios on the left hand side also should be lambda 1. Therefore, we have the required formula we can say ratio ratios of components let us call this as 4 and this as 5 of 5 and 4. The ratios of the components of 5 and 4 is equal to lambda 1. Therefore, ratios of the components of the left hand sides of of 3 and 2 is equal to lambda 1. We are talking of the ratio of this 3 left hand side and the components of the ratio of the components of 3 and 2. <coughs> Therefore, we have the value for lambda 1 that will be equal to limit we have taken k tending to infinity, k is tending to infinity. The ratio of the components a k plus 1 v let us take r for component divided by a k v r r is equal to 1 2 3 n therefore these will give you the ratios of components these are ratios of components there are n ratios in this because it is n dimension. Therefore, there are n approximations for lambda 1, all of them converging to the same number lambda 1. Therefore, this will automatically give us the stopping criteria that these are n ratios, the difference between any two ratios should be less than tolerance, then all of them have converged to a particular number. Therefore, we can immediately write down what is the stopping criteria. For iteration is simply magnitude of difference between any two ratios is less than some given tolerance, some given tolerance. Therefore, this gives us the eigenvalue in magnitude. Now, let us just look back this slide once more. Now, in the limit, 
the right hand sides of 2 and 3 are reducing to c 1 lambda 1 k v 1 c 1 lambda 1 k v 1. Therefore, automatically v 1 is following us everywhere v 1 is there. Therefore, whatever this one we have got on the right hand side when you have taken this common factor out of this when you have taken the common factor out of this what we have here is nothing v 1. If I multiply this this will be a constant multiple of the vector which is the same of the vector. Therefore, whatever we have the right hand side is itself the Eigen vector corresponding to this one we do not have to do any more computation. Therefore, the Eigen vector is automatically available on the right hand side. So, the Eigen vector v 1 is automatically appearing is automatically appearing on the right hand side. Now, only thing you may need it may be you would like to have it as normalized form or anything we can do it normalized form and write down the Eigen vector. Now, the fastest convergence will be obtained if the next Eigen value smaller than the largest Eigen value is much smaller. That means, if lambda 2 if the second value is much smaller than lambda 1 then it is going to converge very very fast. Now, one important thing to note here is this this is going to give us the largest Eigen value in magnitude not its sign. It gives the largest Eigen value therefore, we obtain in this method the magnitude of the largest Eigen value. Therefore, when we are forming the ratios we may forget its sign we need not write the signs because that will that sign is not going to be useful for us. Now, if I want the sign of the Eigen value I must put back in the determinant and then make it C 0 that a characteristic equation is satisfied. So, the sign can be determined by substituting in the characteristic equation. A minus lambda i is equal to 0 that means, whether it is for the positive value it is getting satisfied or for the negative value it is going to satisfied we just have to check whether it is satisfied. So, that you you are sure of the of the sign of the Eigen value. Now, let us write down this an algorithm simple uh, algorithm. So, let us call this as algorithm. Now, here when we are uh, starting this procedure when we have done it uh, we have written this particular step let v be equal to this one. So, v is unknown to us therefore, the if you have the actual linear dependent Eigen vectors I need a linear combination of this. Therefore, I take arbitrarily any Eigen vector as my initial vector because nothing is known I can take arbitrarily any Eigen vector. So, we will take v 0 is an arbitrary starting vector arbitrary initial vector. The only difficulty that can arise in an arbitrary initial vector is if you have taken this Eigen vector is as orthogonal to the actual Eigen vector then the iteration will not converge because the, that is the only problem difficulty that can rise it so happens that your arbitrary initial vector is orthogonal to the final vector then the method will not work. So, not orthogonal to to v 1. Uh, <coughs> probably you will never be able to write such an arbitrary initial vector which will really be orthogonal, but we have to be say that when it may fail may fail and therefore, normally uh, we can if nothing is known you we just away straight away start with 1 1 1 as the Eigen vector we can safely start as 1 1 1 as the as the initial vector. Now, then the algorithm is let us write uh, what we have to, I have to write down here is the this this step I want to write down. So, what I would do is I will denote by the vector y k plus 1 is equal to a v k. Now, it is important that in these computations we do not know the actual values or numbers in the matrix A. So, when you multiply by this v it is possible that the round of errors may grow. Therefore, we would like to keep this round of error under control that means 
we would see that the none of the components of this v is greater than 1. That means, we will normalize such that the largest component of v is 1, then the round of error is completely under control and it is a simple tool for us to do it. What we do is before I put back because the next step is to pre multiply, before I multiply I will normalize v. So, what I would do is I will write down the new one as y k plus 1 this is vector and divide this by m k plus 1, m k plus 1 is a number uh, let us write it here m k plus 1 is the largest comp element of this one. I want normalizing such that the largest element of V is 1. So, this will be maximum of R of y k plus 1 of R. So, that means, whatever I have got here this vector I will take this largest element and divide it out. So, that the largest element in magnitude is equal to 1. So, then I would have this as m k plus 1 and therefore, your lambda 1 is limit of k tending to infinity y k plus 1 r by v k r. These are n ratios, these are n ratios and uh, let us just uh, close it here and uh, therefore, whatever is there available for us v k plus 1 is the Eigen vector. is the corresponding eigen vector corresponding eigen vector okay we would close for today